Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about TBS's show, Rat in the Kitchen. We are joined today by host Natasha Legero and Chef Ludo. And the first thing that I was really interested in is just that journey. Hi. <laughs> That journey, whenever you're stepping into a new venture, you're starting a new TV show, there's always that element of finding the voice, the dynamic and the flow of the show. And obviously in hosting it, you're primarily responsible for that with different contestants coming in episode by episode. And what's really interesting about this show as well is that it changes that flow and dynamic a little bit, but still is very linear throughout the series. And so I was really interested in that journey of making the first couple of episodes and really the two of you figuring out your rhythm together and what the overall rhythm and flow of the show was going to be between the two of you? Well, one thing that really helped was that like, I would say 100% of the chefs knew who Ludo was and were like extremely excited to impress him because, you know, the chef, we would have seven different chefs each episode and they would range from home cooks to people who own their own restaurants. But, you know, so they, they're all in this like food world. And so this is like their break to impress Ludo. So, so that kind of helped. Um, and he's a natural teacher too. So it's not like, you know, if something was disgusting, we just throw it in their faces. Although I'm not saying that didn't happen. Didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Ludo's very serious about yeah. food. So, you very know, serious. <laughs> take that very seriously. Well, to that point, Ludo, was it really important to you that as you were kind of going through the, the judging and the critique process, that it was also about educating the chefs, kind of sharing your experience? Because you talk a lot about even just your own history of what was it like working in the kitchen when you were 21, when some of them are sharing their experience, you're really giving them critiques on the specifics of the dishes as well. And was that something early on that was really important to you in your dynamic with the contestants? I mean, it was very important for me when I judge the food to give them some advice, you know, tell them a little bit also about my uh, my memory with food and how I learned how to cook. I mean, it was just, I love to, I love, like say Natasha, I love to teach. So it was very important for me. If they do a mistake with the food, I want to teach them how to be better. Definitely. You know, I'm not here just for scream, for nothing. You know, I just also, um, it's my job as a chef. I always say the number one job as a chef is to teach. And I love to teach and I love to give advice and get some inspiration. So even how people were cutting their food, I mean, yeah. like little things in the kitchen, because we got to be there kind of circling them. And also, you know, it's a whodunit. So we're kind of like invested in the game, too, yeah. and trying to find out who the rat is. So we get to kind of like, you know, skulk around the kitchen yeah. and try to figure it out. I mean, to that point with the mystery element of trying to figure out who the rat is, is obviously half the fun of watching the show. And it feels like the two of you are very much the conduit to the audience's journey of trying to figure it out as well. Um, were there any moments where you were discussing about or thinking about how much do we want to say out loud? How much do we want to call out as we're watching behavior? Because there's things that could be genuine mistakes, could be rat behavior, and you never quite know. And you're obviously trying to kind of call attention to things, but without ever giving too much away, even though you yourselves don't know as well and you're still in the game at the same time I mean it's it's hard to know sometimes you know a bad chef will just be a bad chef <laughs> and it, it could be the rat but I mean they really found talented people so that that wasn't that common yeah the, the food was very good on the show when I'm really people or the contestant really cook from their heart and really give 100% of their best really to put the best food in front of us Definitely. Sometimes it was sabotage in a good way, but people was really putting a lot of good food in front of us. And Ludo, you're obviously the one doing the, the critiquing within the judging, but Natasha, you're still kind of tasting it and, and giving your opinion as well. Um, was that something that everybody knew was important from the get-go to have your dynamic and, and to make sure that you were part of that conversation? Um, I mean, I don't know if everyone thought it was important for me to make jokes about the food, but I'm glad they let me and it definitely like helped add a little bit of lightness to it and also made it fun because, you know, it's a cooking mm -hmm. show, but it's, it's also fun. And That's so, right, yeah, cooking should be fun, you know, and this show is very fun with Natasha. That's what I like. We take the food very seriously, but Natasha put her twist and the show is fun to watch. 
And Ludo, when, you, when you're kind of thinking about the, the feedback that you want to give the contestants or the things that you're going to say to them, is it easy to tell when you're tasting the food if something's a little bit off, if it is sabotage or if it is something that genuinely, you know, they just made a bit of a mistake because it is such a high pressure situation as we see on all of these cooking shows. There's always mistakes that happen just from the stress mm-hmm. in the moment. Yes, some mistakes happen naturally, 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 mm-hmm. you know, and some mistakes, you know, there have been sabotage. But sometimes I don't know, you know, it can be really somebody did a mistake and did not, you know, uh, cook perfectly the steak and you don't know if it's been sabotage or if the cook is not good or the cook did a mistake. I mean, it's very confusing sometimes for me, you know, when I judge the food, you know, what's going on here, you know, did somebody really sabotage this dish or the cook did a mistake. I just realized my other job was to translate Ludo. Yes, so you do that very well <laughs> on the show. It's good. I always ask Natasha, how do we say that, Natasha? So I try to help. Yeah. But I also feel like with the translation idea that, that the show kind of plays into that a little bit as well. The one where you're having everyone make, you know, hollandaise eggs and you're giving them the entire task in French. What was the genesis of that particular task and realizing we can give them all the information, but none of them actually speak French. So they won't know the details that you're sharing. I mean, they should learn. They should know how to do it. Right. With yeah. just from watching. Just for watching. They should just pick the, all the, the technique and see by watching how I do, you know, definitely. But uh, the French way, the French speaking was good. And sometimes it was hard for me to speak French because I forgot my French. Oh, he, you kind of do like um, like a mixture. Yeah, a mixture of <laughs> French. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was hard. It was hard. French-lish. I don't know what yeah, you French, call it. Yeah. And when you're tasting the food, is there any apprehension in, in coming into that moment and knowing that you might be trying something that's really delicious, but you might be trying something with 10 tablespoons of salt? Like you don't know if it's going to be a sabotaged piece or not. Not only that, you don't know if you can get sick from it. <laughs> like I had raw shrimp and there was raw pork, you know, because that, that is another way people can sabotage is convince their teammates that it's cooked it's and cooking, everyone's yeah. in the middle of the chaos of the kitchen you know, a really great rat is like really kind of pushing it with their personality too and making people believe something is done when it's not. I mean, we have some amazing rats. We have some amazing rats, seriously. Like some people really sabotage the food like in the good way, very smart, fun. And uh, yeah, we have some good rats in the show. And it was hard for us sometimes to find the rats. Oh, I mean, I'd say like, 80% 80% of the time we were kind of like wow. shocked. Yeah, People shocked. were so good at it, so good. which is kind of surprising. I mean, yeah. they, they just, because you also have to be a good actor, you know, cause you have to really convince your teammates to trust you. So everyone sort of by the third challenge, people are really making alliances and they're like telling people like, don't trust him. I think he's the rat. So, you know, there's a lot of that going on with, you know, also trying to impress mm-hmm. Ludo. And you may not know the answer to this, but I was interested in terms of of the rats because they're so good and there's so many different techniques that they're trying. They're very sly. And it's it's obvious that the casting process for the show has been very conscientious about who they're picking and who might be really good at getting away with it. Because um, of the episodes I've seen, I think there was only one so far where they actually managed to guess correctly, which is really impressive. And I was interested if, if the producers, if anyone kind of has conversations with the rat and kind of talks to them about different ways that they could potentially do them, kind of gives them a little bit of guidance or if they're just coming in blind and it's purely everything that they come up with. I mean, I think the people are being picked because from an interview, just an, you know, these are, our producers are amazing. You know, they, they've done, you know, huge reality shows. So it's like, they kind of know like who's going to be good in this situation, you know, and thankfully Ludo and I don't have to decide. Yeah. And because it's a competition and, and the food is being judged, do you kind of get much time to know the contestants as you're going into filming? Or is it very much that the first time you're meeting them is the first time that we're seeing them on camera as well? Uh, they're all instructed to not make any eye contact with us, uh, nor speak to us. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, we hung out with them as we much as we could. <laughs> well, with them is a kitchen. And, Some yeah. of their food was so amazing. Yeah. Like, some people like I'm still trying to recreate a sauce or something that I learned on the show because yeah. there were some really talented chefs. Definitely, we have some good food. I will steal some recipe. Definitely, <laughs> yeah, I will steal some recipe. Yeah. 
Well, because Natasha, you came into the show kind of not necessarily as a chef and a cook yourself, but as someone who's a really big foodie and, and loves good ingredients. And how do you feel that that really helped you in terms of, of kind of the dynamic of the show, finding a lot of the commentary that you wanted to make throughout the series? Well, you know, I went to college. My my background is in theater criticism. And then as a stand-up, I feel like I kind of translated that into like cultural criticism. And now as a host of a food show, I feel like I'm sort of, you know, food criticism came very naturally to me. I love to eat. Uh, I, I did like further develop my palate though with Ludo because he's very into acidity, things that I hadn't yeah, quite acidity. thought of and balance, balance. Yes. And so now, I mean, I can't say my husband appreciates my new food criticism because uh, <laughs> he does all the cooking. So I'm always like, you know, I don't think this is balanced, darling. Yeah. Um, and he's like, well, you should just be happy oh, that I cook. <laughs> oh, if you need help. <laughs> okay. The show also opens every episode with, you know, the title sequence having a little bit of a, a rapport and a back and forth between the two of you. And sometimes it's leaning more into the comedy. Sometimes we're learning a little bit more about your kind of background as a chef, Ludo. Um, what was the dynamic in terms of finding what the script and, and what those little asides were going to be in the opening sequence and kind of like teeing up the tone of each episode? Uh, Ludo would just say whatever we asked him to say. That's it. <laughs> Want me to say that's it. <laughs> And the cameras are obviously on you a lot. You know, there's cameras that are following all of the contestants very judiciously, but there's a lot of times where we really get to watch the commentary as the two of you are standing at the side of the room. Are the cameras on you throughout the entire time or are they kind of like coming over to you piecemeal throughout when there's something going on that they feel like they want to capture a reaction from? No, the camera, they're always on us. Like, they're always on us during the show, you know, with uh, Natasha and myself when we talk, Natasha makes jokes. I make joke too in, in English, but nobody understands me, so so it's fine. But uh, I understand. Yeah, I understand you understand. Them. You understand my accent now. But no, we have camera on, on us uh, during all the show, during all the competition when they're cooking. And Natasha, you know, you're also kind of playing around with the contestants a little bit in jest sometimes if they're, you know, there's a contestant in the first episode that talks incessantly and you kind of call her out on it, uh, you know, and you're not afraid to kind of go into that. But again, it's always from like a friendly perspective. It's never from a mean way. Um, how did you kind of well, find they cut own... all the mean stuff out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask how you found your inroad into like that dynamic of calling certain things out and having, you know, a nice little bit of sarcasm and jest and playfulness, but, but it always coming from a place of kind of friendship with the contestants as well. Well, you know, these people came here, you know, not to talk about COVID, but you know, they, they came, they quarantined, they were like so excited to be here to, to, to win this money, to meet Chef Ludo, to cook for one of their heroes. You know, you don't want to like squash their dreams completely. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, just always having that balance is important. I was also interested in the amount of time that the two of you had the ability to spend together in pre-production before you went into filming the show again, just to kind of really find that dynamic and that comedy, because, you know, it's, it's so clearly there from the first episode. And then even then it feels like there's even more of kind of a kinship and a closeness and you kind of get to know each other's rhythms even more as the series progresses through the episodes as well. We had no choice. We were in Atlanta and we had no one else to talk to except each other. That's no. true. Quarantine for 10 days. But, yeah. but yeah. the producers were really smart. Like, you know, even though when we started the show, we couldn't meet in person because of everything that was going on in the world. But, you know, they kept making us do Zoom. <laughs> they kept making us Zoom. And Zoom so it's like, OK, you have another Zoom with Ludo. So we would like Zoom and he'd be like in the middle of cooking and he'd have to like take his mask off and we would talk and ask questions. And, you know, so I think they really wanted us to, to know each other and, and, you know, Ludo's French and he's an artist. So he's, you know, easy to relate to. He's, he's got like very high oh, standards please. and. The connection was very good right away. Yeah. I mean, you were fun. I mean, I'm a snob. Yeah. He's French, so he's French just naturally a snob. He can't help so we're, it. We're good. I mean, it was great. So let's see. The connection went right away. What were the most useful details that they gave you up front when you were having a lot of conversations with the producers, when you were kind of getting together and doing those Zooms in terms of how they envisioned the show, kind of how they hoped that you would really carry it as presenters and hosts? Yeah, I think I think it's just like, 
you know, um, I started at the comedy store uh, in Los Angeles. And when you start there, there's like, you have to do three minutes and they have a little sign at the sign in. And it's from Mitzi Shore who's passed. But what she said is you don't have to be funny for three minutes. You just have to be yourself. And I think that that's like a really important thing, you know, to remember is like not trying, but just like, you know, being yourself. And then I think with his expertise and then me kind of diffusing when it gets too tense, <laughs> it, it kind of just works because then you find your own thing of how, how you can be yourselves together too. So I, I think, you know, you, you, you want to just kind of be open and flow with the creative and see what happens. And also Ludo is very open to like, me teasing him or correcting his English. And I don't know you... joke about me. <laughs> I like it. I like when people, when Natasha make a joke about my English or myself, or I like it. It's fun. It's I, jo fun. I, I do a joke on his English. Voilà, you I know. love it. It's great. <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, so I, I think it, well, what do you think, Ludo? No, I think uh, Natasha, I agree with you. The, the producer, you know, really tell us to be ourselves, And that's what I like about this show. You know, you're not somebody else. You know, it's you are really you. Like, like for example, judging, I make all the decision. Nobody makes a decision for me. It's just, it was really natural like that. I like it. Like nothing is, is uh, right, right, right before, not right before. Right. The script, you no know, script or whatever. It's just really, I make the decision. I be myself. Nobody tell me what to do. And you're really and thoughtful about it too. It was, yeah. Sometimes they would be like, Ludo, can you spend less than five minutes judging their dish? I know, I, I, I was, I, because it's very important for me, the people at home <laughs> really can taste the dishes. So sometimes I know it takes me, I was speaking a lot about dishes. And when I watched the show last, last week, I said, oh my God, they cut me a lot when it's <laughs> the dish. Oh my God. Because it's important for me, the people at home, you know, really feel the dishes, you know. So I was really taking time to explain the dish, you know, all the details. And everybody was sleeping, I know, but. I mean, with that in mind, what are what are kind of the details that you felt were really important to try and capture for the audience? Because you are the taste buds of the audience's eyes in watching the show. I mean, I think the, the flavor, definitely the flavor of the dish, you know, the, the acidity, the fat, the balance between the, the salt, the sugar, the texture, the smell. The plating. I mean, the plating, I mean, all these things, you know, I really want the the people at home when they watch the show to really feel the dishes, like they can eat it, you know? Because it's not like when you watch a competition of singing, you can hear the song, you know? People cannot taste the food at home. So it's my job to really explain the dish like very, very well. Like people can imagine the test. Mm -hmm. And what are what are the components that go into, into your judging and determining whether it's going to be a pass or a fail? Because in watching it, you know, there are dishes where maybe not everything's perfect, but there's something that really shines through enough that it's still a pass for them. Well, but size depends on my mood. <laughs> depends on my mood, that's it, guys. I mean, that's it. Depend his depends mood. My mood. Depend you know his I mean? mood. Depends my mood, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, if you have a really big mistake, you know, in, in the dish, you know, like something undercooked or missing component, 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 thank you. And we go back on the show. <laughs> and uh, like, I will not pass the dish, but if some few mistakes, I'm not going to be too strict sometimes. If the dish tastes good, if the plating is not that great, it's all about the test at the end. You know, that's the most important thing, the test. You know, so I'll be, I'm very fair on the show, very fair. And Natasha, one of the things that you're really great at in the show is kind of carrying us through a lot of the segues. You know, there's certain formalities that you have to have in terms of what's going to happen next in the show. And you really kind of use the comedy to make their, make it feel like there's a real looseness and a casualness and, and that build that connection with the audience. And what are the ways in which your background in, in stand up and, and training in improv as well really kind of help with working on a show like this in that way? Um, well, I think that the producers kind of allowed me to put it in my own words. So we would, you know, we, we shot pretty fast. So we would sit in the dressing room in the morning and I would say, okay, can I say this? Can I say this? And then he would put it all in the script. So, you know, just so it can kind of come out like myself, as opposed to like just a host who stands with their hands here and just says it, you know, which no, nothing against that, but you know, that, that was never something I really wanted to do. So I wanted to make it feel like me and stand up. So, and then also just improvising with Ludo, you know, yeah. just talking. So I, I think they were really cool about that. 
Um, and I definitely, by the end of the run, had every <laughs> rule memorized. And <laughs> I mean, there's because there's so many rules that you want to get in and how the game works so that everyone can keep up. Um, but at the same time, you want to make it fun. So was it more about them coming in and giving you a play by play? Like, you know, this is going to be the challenge this episode. This is the money that's on the line for it. And then just having exactly. And then yeah. around that, I can kind of like say what I want. Yeah. You know, and with the fact that the challenges do change episode to episode, just to kind of really keep everyone on their toes as well. Um, you know, what was that dynamic with the contestants in terms of obviously you're presenting to the audience, you're presenting to the contestants, what that's going to be. Did they ever come back with any questions? Are they allowed to have questions around it as they're trying to figure it out, particularly when it comes to the money that they're deciding to put on the line when they're choosing amounts and stuff like that? I mean, they there was definitely I would say there were some people who talked back. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> who were not happy there were some tears yeah. there were some uh yeah, I mean, right. swear some words, people, yeah. I mean you know. sometimes I was judging the food and the cook was not agree with me about the test so we have some few uh, exactly uh -huh, exchange you know what I mean and you know sometimes young people think they know a lot so that could happen sometimes too um but yeah, it's like, I, th I think in general, people respected you. No, no, of course. Yeah. As the master chef. Yeah, and I respect them. It was, uh, it, was, it was good. It was very good. Yeah. You know? I also really like the dynamic that the chefs come from, from so many different backgrounds and different levels of experience. You have people yeah. who have been working in the industry for years, people who are just getting their foot in, people who are really doing it for themselves, but have started training, um, you know, and, and what were kind of the most interesting aspects to, to watch and, and maybe even learn from just in watching all of the different ways that they approach cooking, because it's not linear amongst them at all, which is great. Mm -hmm. I, I think this was probably like very challenging for some of them because there was so much pressure, you know, and, and also having to work together. I think some, some of the people had had hard. to be so collaborative before. Uh -huh. Work together, it's, 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 it's very hard, you know, to you're on the competition show and you need to share your dish with somebody else you don't know. You ask him to do something and you don't know if he's a good cook. I mean, yeah, it's very, it's very difficult, but for the contestant. This is why I don't cook. Too much stress, too much timing. I mean, I don't know how they do it. It's, it's just everything coming out hot. I mean, hot. I yeah. <laughs> At the same time, forget same not cooked. To like just yeah. like all the same temperature seems impossible. Yeah. And what would you say were the most challenging aspects or the biggest learning curves in terms of, of hosting this show, either in general or if there was a particular moment in one of the episodes that was challenging? Oh, it was the most difficult thing on the show. I mean, it was pretty hard for us because they wanted us to try to fake find out the rat, and it it's it, it, it was it, not it easy. Was not easy to find the rats. But you know, people at home might they might have a, a better time because we're doing so much. But it was it was definitely a fun surprise, and like it was great, yeah. everyone being like at the end, people would get angry because they're like wait that's my wait. partner that's yeah. the person I like trusted we thought that person was the one that we hate so you know I, I think that 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 was fun but the most challenging aspect hmm. hmm what do you think I mean it might have been the easiest job that I ever did no <laughs> <laughs> I mean I just got to like be myself eat food Joke it's with fun. Ludo. It's a, fun show. it's a fun show. It's fun to watch. It's very, it's very seriously about food, but it's fun to watch too. And it's a game too. You know, you're at home and you try to figure out who's in the rat. And that is so cool. Has it been interesting to, to watch some of the final episodes and, you know, you were kind of joking earlier about some of the editing that they've done, but also the editing is very clever in terms of the way it allows us to hone in on certain details and certain information. Are there things that you've kind of seen in watching the episodes that maybe you didn't even catch when you were in the room with the contestants? Hmm. I mean, it's really, I don't know how you feel, but it's really hard to watch yourself. Yeah. So, you know, I just like to think they'll tell me if I'm doing something wrong and, you know, I'll watch the clips. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I watch the clips. I don't watch myself on TV. It's I'm, so, you know, because then you're like, oh, why did I wear that outfit? Or what, what about my collars? You know, you're thinking of all the things. So I don't know. I, I just sometimes I don't want to overthink things. And maybe that's wrong, but like I'm more of the school of they'll tell me if there's something I should watch and I don't want to watch it and then change things based on something I think in my head that's just a neurosis. And then, 
then I'm like doing this new thing. And they're like, wait, what you were doing already worked. So I, I don't know. I'm sure there's other performers out there who think like that, but that's just kind of my vibe. No, I, I appreciate that fully. And I'm on the same page. I, um, I also wanted to ask the two of you in terms of working together and the, the dynamic that you've built throughout the whole first season, what you really took away and learned from one another, because obviously, you know, Ludo, you're getting to come in and work side by side with Natasha and kind of see how she approaches things, particularly with her background as a performer and as a comedian. And then Natasha, you're kind of like getting to come in, you know, like we said earlier with a really keen interest in food, but getting to see how Ludo approaches certain things from that regard as well. You want to go first? Go first. Ludo, um, well, you know, it was, it's Ludo. It, well, okay, here's something funny or interesting that I learned uh, just from working with him. Like, you know, Ludo's a master chef. He has Michelin stars. He has world renowned restaurants, but he's somehow like not exactly a foodie. Like every night we would go to the same Thai restaurant across the street. And I was like, Ludo, don't you, we're in Atlanta. Don't you want to go to all the amazing restaurants? And he's like, no, I don't want to be influenced by anyone else's dishes. And I'm like, well, then how do you come up with your dishes? And he's like, from a dream or from a, from a cookbook, cookbook like he, he gets old cookbooks like you know so it just it's fun for me to watch the creative process flow through someone who's not a performer you know creativity is such a interesting thing and it can have so many forms and I've never been around like someone who's whose form is is a chef and I think that's like it was just really interesting to me it's like the same creativity but it's it's just in a different form it's true we went a lot of, we eat a lot of Thai food <laughs> Not even a good Thai restaurant, no, just like a plain yeah, basic. Well. Hey, <laughs> Madasha, how are you tonight? You, you're sensible. <laughs> no, but you order the same thing every night as well. Oh yeah, sometimes yes. He the, does the green curry. Yeah, it was good. I like it. <laughs> and the papaya salad uh, with the shrimp. It was good. No, but Ludo was telling me about a dish he had that was eel with white Mash, white chocolate the, mashed potatoes toast, with apple. apple. And I'm like, how did you come up with those combinations? I mean, it took me like five minutes to realize he was describing eel. What, how do you yeah, say heel, eel? Heel, yeah, he heel. keeps he kept saying heel, and I was like heel with chocolate. I don't heel. understand. Eel. 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 Voilà. So, but he said, "Yeah, I, I, I woke up and it was in a dream. dream. The white sugar and potato." So, <laughs> but it's such a I don't know. It's so it's so creative. I, I think that's so cool. It was so much fun to also to work with Natasha. How oh, she's so creative. I don't know how she. You don't have to say I'm creative just because no, I said you're No, the morning <laughs> because the morning, the morning we wake up early in the morning, go on the set, and she's with Ken, the producer, and all and looking for a joke like at seven o'clock in the morning. I don't know how you function at seven o'clock in the morning and working on joke. Trying right? to make Ludo laugh, so it's well, like if he wouldn't understand a joke, we're like, okay, let's pick a different no, one. But it was a, a maze for me, like we just get some joke like that in in one minute. It's amazing, but you know, it's the, the creativity, the mind. It just and the jokes are so funny, and she she liked to make joke of, about me. I love it. It was so funny. I'm so French, Napoleon, the Bel Bourguignon, the wine. I mean, the jokes are hilarious. But it, it's just amazing to see how, how Natasha walk. You know, in the, aren't French people known for their great sense of humor? Yeah, I mean, I love it when you make joke. When people make joke about me, I love it because it's just reality. Especially with my accent, with my my English, you know. Yeah. You found the right co-host for that then. But you know, sometimes <laughs> they put subtitle on me. I love it. It's subtitle. Like subtitle. Yeah. You know what I mean, you look like a smart documentary. <laughs> no, I love it. Well, it's, it's such a great first season and the dynamic between the two of you kind of plays so well. And, you know, it's, it's absolutely addictive to the point where me and my colleague who are watching episodes together have started watching other TV shows oh. and referring to certain characters as the rat within them. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's cool, yeah. Really appreciate the two of you taking time to talk about the series and congrats on everything with the show so far. Oh, thank Merci. you thank for you being so, much for your time. Thank you. In, uh, so you cool. know, interested. Thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be with you today. <laughs>